Hey everyone, Tracy Lewis with We Are Winter Garden. I'm here with Scott, who is the CEO, founder, and president of Matthews Hope, as well as John, who is a graduate of the Matthews Hope Moving Forward program. We are here on episode 15 of Straight Talk with No BS, and where we're going to continue our Real Faces of Homelessness series with John. Before we get into your story, John, tell us a little bit about your employment and your living situation today. Well, currently I'm employed full-time at Matthews Hope in their CNC department, helping to uh, produce product for the store and to uh, help train people to learn what I do. And I live on Merritt Island now. Oh, by the beach. Pretty close. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, I have to evacuate. Oh yes, <laughs> if there's yes. a hurricane. I'm sure there's lots. There's lots of cons. With John, that you want to give well. your phone number just in case anybody no. wants to reach no. out to you? <laughs> it could happen. So John, it has. <laughs> <laughs> who's the host here? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> the beach got us all off topic. Now we're at the beach. Um, so John, what circumstances brought you to homelessness? Financial. <laughs> we're running out of money. Okay. Um, things that sometimes you just can't foresee them happening. Um, there, I mean, part of it was all of a sudden I lost the residence I was living in. And then I was, I was working as an Uber driver. Okay. Then there was problems with the car. Mm. <laughs> and also I had back child support that threw me for a loop. And they, um, what do you call it? They, uh, the garnish. No, not the garnish. Then when they take your license away. Oh, oh, that's real. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is so your then license. all of a sudden, yeah, then I didn't have a way to earn any money. Wow. I suddenly found myself without the ability to earn money. And what was it like coming to the realization, or did you come to the realization that you were homeless? Oh, it's tough. It's very tough. Were you? Yeah, I mean, were you, you in you denial? Got, I or think. Were you like? It, there's a lot of pride you got to swallow the pride okay. and um, just accept, hey, I, I'm not going to get out of this by myself. Okay. Once you get to a certain point, I don't think you can get out of it by yourself. Mm. Be very difficult. And Scott is coming to a realization for the Matthews Hope guests. Is it hard? Is it a struggle for them? Yeah, I think it is. I, I, well, the, the, often what happens is a lot of our guests, when they come, they, they, their thought is, well, I'm not like them. Okay. In you know they're kind of all thinking that and then one of the things that i tell them and, and it's it's kind of probably a hard pill to swallow at first is is you kind of got to embrace your homelessness understand your this is where you're at and and getting to that point where you understand that uh, that you need the help i think for men in particular it's hard because pride gets involved and and you know we're we're, we're raised to, you know, no matter what kind of family we came up mm -hmm. crappy or good we're kind of raised to you know we're supposed to be the hunters and and go out there and take care of business mm -hmm. and i think that when we come to that place where we feel that we can't do that much can't take care of anybody else but much less ourselves that, that's a tough place to be and i certainly to, never thought that that would happen to me mm -hmm. i it was it was a hard pill to swallow <laughs> and what was your living yeah. situation you? At that time, well, after I'd lost the residence I was living in, they sold it out from underneath me. Mm -hmm. So then I went and rented a room. Okay. So then, but then I was paying it on a weekly basis. Which is expensive. Well, yeah, everything's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, the main thing, when you lose your income, you're pretty much done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how did you find Matthew's Hope? You were renting a room. Originally... I think it was pointed out to me by my niece. Okay. I think back when Matthew's Hope was brand new, I so think that's who pointed know me that way. Your situation where you were at at that time? Yes. Okay. So your niece niece mentioned Matthew's Hope. Right. And then what happened? And then I went to Matthew's Hope and I talked to this guy. <laughs> Scott, do you remember that? I do. Um, there's some conversations you never forget. Um, you know, meeting John, I think the first, you know, I, I'm always kind of assessing who I'm sitting with and trying to figure out what's, what's going on in their head and where they're at mentally and, and what have you. And, but my, one of my first thoughts on John was, 
why is this guy homeless? Because the way he spoke, um, articulated himself well, he, um, uh, he, the way he carried himself, didn't take on that look of, of what someone takes to think so of as typically. might not think yeah. that he yeah, they're not going to look at John and go, "What's what's wrong with this guy?" Mm-hmm. or, you know, "What a bum." They're not going to look would look at him and see sure. that. And but I think for John, the hard part for him, and he's already said it was, you know, getting to that point because it's not not like one day when he was a kid he said, "Gee, I hope one day I can be homeless." Right. Um, you know, it's never part of somebody's <laughs> never goal, that right? Would happen. And and I think that you know he wasn't a kid either. So I think as you get older too. You, the least you think about, you, you kind of feel like you've kind of established life and you're going to be okay. And I think in talking to John, there was part of him that had kind of had one foot in and understanding, uh, I'm in trouble. But this other part, wanting to not really ask for help either. Mm. And what, what made him a good tough. candidate for the program? I, I think part of it was really the way he carried himself. The, you know, he, you know, we always try to look at something they have, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes do they have a degree, do they assert some kind of certification, do they have a car, um, you know, how do they carry about themselves, how do they care, uh, care for themselves, but also how do they carry themselves, and I think with John, a big part of it played with how he carried himself, I said, okay, this is, this is something that as we try to remold, if you will, and re-hit his start button, mm-hmm. um, that I, I saw that as a, a near possibility, not one that was, you know, there's people we bring in at times where I I even have to wonder how is this ever going to end, what the end game is going to be. And and John wasn't that type of person. John, when you met Matthew's Hope, you talked to Scott, you didn't know really what was going to happen. And Scott, he talked about the Moving Forward program. How was that introduced to you? Was there rules? Was there, would see like... Oh, there were rules. Can you tell me, like, take us, take us back John, to John, tell me how time. much you like the rules. Take us back to that time and how you were introduced to that and how you stepped into that program. Well, you pretty much got to give up a lot of freedom. Okay. And just get down to business, and it's all about business. I mean, it's, it's get to work on time, take care of what okay. you're supposed to do, make sure you're living right, and you're going to church, and you're, you're doing things on the, on the up and up. So they had guidelines for you? Yes. And do you feel like a lot of people, um, they either start the program and stop it or they don't start it at all because of those rules? Or how do you... I think that's a combination. What do you feel like... I think there's some people who just are not willing to give up those freedoms. Whatever it is they want to do. I don't know if they want to go out and do dope. I don't know what they're wanting to do. Right. They aren't willing to say, hey, I can put this aside for, to make things better tomorrow. Gotcha. And, I mean, there, there was times, you know, J- John is a thinker, sometimes an overthinker. And, and there were times that when... that John? You know, oh, yeah. yeah. There, there Look, there, <laughs> yeah. there, there were times when, I, I think it's because John had some time to think that he would start to overthink the program itself and the guidelines that were put in front of him. And he would want to talk about it, he'd get mad. And uh, usually what would happen is, is that uh, he might tell his advocate what he didn't like and what have you. And then usually I was called in and I'd have to have a little come to Jesus meeting <coughs> with him and, and basically tell John, and I've said it to him over and again, you know, John, uh, how was it working out before? Okay, you know, and, and do you feel progress is being made? And, and typically he would say it wasn't working out before, and yes, progress is getting made, but it was just that frustration of, of I think sometimes, I mean, again, John wasn't a kid when he came to us, and, and suddenly he has a time he's supposed to be in his house. He has to be someplace at a particular time, that people are watching his every move. You know, we, are, we weren't watching his every move to sit there and see how miserable we could make him. We were watching every move to see in real world, if he acted a certain way, how would that work for him? Mm-hmm. You know, people get mad sometimes and they'll walk out of, an, out of the office or walk out of the, the shop. And in real world, you walk out of your boss's office, you walk out of the shop with not, you're probably walked out for the last time. Right. So the opportunity for Matthew's Hope was to show some grace, but then turn around and say, okay, think about this. The world is full of, of, of rules and guidelines. And, and one of the challenges that intellectuals have, and, and I, it's fair to say that John is a bit of an intellectual, I, I'll, and, I, and I say that with respectfully, yeah. okay? 
the challenge that people do, that are intellectual have sometimes is they look at something in the world and where you and I look at it, we go, that's awful, that shouldn't be, that's wrong. Why is not somebody doing something about that? We, we look at that, but then we go, but that's the world we live in, and so we learn how to work within that. Mm -hmm. Where, from an intellectual standpoint, what a lot of people do is they remove themselves from the situation. I just won't participate in the world as I see it. Mm -hmm. And that becomes a real challenge. And John wasn't all the way on that end, but enough to where I think that he thought, this is an outsider looking in, and I'm, not, and I'm you know, we've, I've never really talked about this. Um, he may feel differently, but, but I saw someone that was going to say, okay, I, I think I know better. And, and to try to understand, get across to him without being painful, but being painfully honest and saying, well, if you knew better, we probably wouldn't be here. Right. Okay, so it wasn't so much that John was wrong. It was how do we change some of his thinking for where he's at right now so that when the time does become to be independent again, that he won't withdraw out of the world because it's really easy to do. Right. John, do you remember any times where you felt like you weren't going to make it through the program? There might have been one. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what were the struggles for you? Like, what do oh, you... I'm a hard-headed person. And uh, when I think something's wrong, you're going to know it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, that, was, and that, was, yeah, yeah. that was part of the struggle. Right. Right. So what made you want to stay? Oh, I knew, I kind of always knew. Could you do it by yourself? That, that I was better off staying to solve these problems than, than if I just went down. I, w I probably would have never showed up and talked to him if I didn't think that that was the best way to go. Gotcha. And how did it feel to graduate from the program? Yeah, that was a relief. How long? <laughs> Freedom! How long were you in the program? Too long. I don't know. It took a long time to pay the bills off. Yeah. Yeah. I, what, three, four years? Yeah. I, John, John so, had some unique situations, uh, okay. some, some challenges. I mean, like he mentioned earlier that, you know, though his child was grown, he still, the court still wanted their money. Right. And that was preventing a lot for him. Um, and this is what a lot of people don't realize is that even when someone like John wants to pay and wants to take responsibility of paying, the challenge of, of balancing that and still keeping yourself off the streets is, is a difficult one. And, and I'm not sure I have a, a great answer for it, but I will tell you that we see this often. Mm -hmm. And then what happens sometimes is, is more times than not, rather than fighting through the way John did, people just give up. And you know, I, I hear sometimes people choose to be homeless and I go, no, I've, I've been homeless and I've been around homeless for a good part of my life. I've never seen anybody choose to be homeless, but I have seen people choose to remain homeless because they just finally got off the grid and they said, you know what, I, I, I can't do this. You know, I, I remember one of, uh, do you remember Happy years ago? Yeah, uh, that's been a while. Yeah, back. yeah. Happy was this huge, big Mexican gangbanger and he was the real deal. I mean, the tattoo in the back, you know, what have you. And, and Tappy went to work. And within like something like four days of him going to work, when they put his information, his social security number and stuff into the system, uh, they tracked him down for uh, back child support. Mm -hmm. And they basically garnished almost all his wages. And Happy kind of broke down and said, I I'm responsible, but if I can't even feed myself, how am I gonna do this? Mm -hmm. you know, and so we see that to where people just finally go, you know what, I'm, I'm done. And, and I'll give John credit because there are times when, when uh, I think that he was closer to saying he was done than maybe he remembers, but, but John would weigh it out. The intellectual, again, looked at it real hard and said, you know what, I may not like this, right. but uh, it's gonna, I'm going to end up in a better place because of it. So with the support of Matthew's Hope, you were able to pay some debt off. Now you have your own place. Yeah, by staying in the program, I earned enough points yeah. <laughs> to eventually pay off all the debts. So that was... <laughs> That's and, huge. It, 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 well, no, it, it, it was huge. <laughs> huge. It was debt. huge. Probably 20 grand worth wow. of huge. Yeah. It, it was a pretty heavy weight over, over his head. Of course. That's a lot. You know, and uh, the, the thing about it was that, uh, you know, John was able to, 
you know, he involved himself deep into the shop and, uh, you know, the hope chest and, and uh, is very creative and thoughtful. And so he was able to kind of establish a way to stay with us because he was able to help us establish a shop. And through that, was we were able to help him continuously chip away at that debt and help negotiate some of that debt down for him. Some of it can be negotiated, others can't. I mean, the, the, believe me, the state was not interested in negotiating his child support. Yeah. Um, there were other things that he had that we were able to negotiate down, but ultimately, it's John's doing. We simply were the conduit that was sure. being used and the support system that was being used, but John worked that debt off, and he should be proud of that, and we're proud of him because he did that. That's, yeah. that's something that a lot of people just don't do. They go into hiding and, and, and hope it goes away, and then it bites them in the butt again later on. Right. So what determines somebody graduating through the Moving Forward program? Each person's individual. Okay. It, it really is uh, because they didn't. They all got there a different way. They're going to get out of it a different way. So they each have so a different plan. We suits. really look. We have our guidelines. I tell people we have our black and the white, but we swim in the gray. You know, what is it this particular person needs to, to move forward? You know, whether it's debt, um, whether it's past evictions, whether, whether it's addiction, uh, whatever the case is, we got to kind of zero in on that and then kind of mold the, the moving forward program around their specific gotcha. needs and abilities. Gotcha. Um, John, what made you, because you're graduated now, you could do anything, you have the freedom, but you chose to stay and work with Matthew's Hope. So what does that look like for you and why did you choose to stay? Well, I've, I've been given a pretty good opportunity to go over to Brevard and start up a brand new CNC operation in a shop and and put it together and they're funding it and I'm building it. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, John gets it. He knows what right. we need. He knows my expectations of quality. You know, when, when this first started out, I want to make sure we touch on this, is that um, really getting to the CNC aspect of things was when John had to have some surgery, I'll let him tell you about that, but, but there was a time where he had to recover and so I basically went to him and said, I'm going to invest you know, these thousands of dollars into this equipment. Uh, you, John, you're a smart guy. Teach yourself. I mean, so that's you pretty had much. No, you had no recollection of what it was or how it worked or anything else like that? I wouldn't say none. I mean, I've been around okay. in, in, in the industrial world gotcha. and stuff. So it's not like I knew nothing about it. Okay. But um, I had never run a CNC lathe or, gotcha. or a CNC uh, router. Okay. And, uh, but I did have some computer experience and I knew how to interface. What I didn't know, I knew there was an answer on Google. <laughs> <laughs> this is very true. <laughs> Hopefully it's the right one. <laughs> so what impact has John made with others? Well, I think the, the one is that, you know, one of the reasons we like to have some of our guests have, have stayed on as staff mm -hmm. is because, you know, they each have a different story, mm -hmm. you know, and, and John had a different battle but he had a battle that someone else might see themselves in down the line. And I often tell the folks that have come through our program that, that uh, you might just be the, the conduit, the, the few, the, the, the match, if you will, that lights the fuse mm -hmm. to someone else that comes along, whether it's, the, whether it's the, um, the child support aspect of it, which does play in, or, or the fact that he was losing use of his, of his hands. Mm -hmm. And, and was able to, you know, have to get the surgery. And that was something that probably was not gonna happen if he was, wasn't with us. Right. Um, I screw it up on what it's called every single time. I think it's I'd know the It's Yeah. Depoitrins. It's basically the curling in the hands. This hand is still quite curled. Okay. This one's been, they've both been operated on. But uh, this, this hand used to be like that hand. Gotcha. This operation worked quite well. Okay. And uh, that's how I ended up using computers because I figure I can always run a mouse. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can, I can do quite a bit with this one. Right. I mean, there's some things I can no longer, I can't play piano anymore. I can't mm -hmm. play guitar, but mm -hmm. I still get stuff done. But so, I also tell you that, that what was impressive about John is when he was still working the shop before the CNC came along is there was some pretty intricate work he was doing with the other hand, in my opinion, looked worse than this hand. And, and I would look at his hands and, and watch him work. And it was like, well, how's he doing that? Because sometimes it was like small things and stuff. 
But instead of just throwing up his hands and going, I'm done, I can't do this, uh, he just would fight through and, and would do out. some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and again, that was something I saw in him. I saw that part of the fighter in him is rather than just throwing it up, his hands up in the air and using it as an excuse why I can't get anything done. It was, no, what's the next thing and how do we, how do, what do I got to do? Right. We weren't looking to further disable him from a disabled that we already had come, disability that already had come upon him, mm-hmm. which I think often does is people go, well, you know, he probably can't do that. And I'm just sitting there going, here, John, figure it out. And John would go, okay, the next thing I know, it's done. Right. So I love how you see so many great skills and um, just characteristics in all of your guests, but the community sees something else. And they say, why? waste your time because they made this choice yeah. or they that's not necessarily be, true that so people looking make at the, you i would never think i don't that. think this is community but saying the community, that. Yeah, yeah i know yeah so it's, they it's, would they would say you know why are you spending so much time on on somebody that looks like a lost cause right yeah and see yes. that to me is one of the most unfair things and i think even john uh, it's fair to say that as long as he's been, you know, spent time in the program now working for Matthew Soap, we see people for who they really are that, that a lot of other yeah, people sometimes will never see. It, it can be, sometimes it's a very short period of time and you see this transformation in people. Wow. Once they find out, hey, there's somebody who cares. Somebody who believes somebody in you. Somebody gives a damn. Mm-hmm. And then they find out, hey, I got some skills I didn't even know I had. Mm-hmm. And they start feeling better about themselves, and it can be quite dramatic, the change that takes place in a short period of time. Wow. And it's fun to see. And then it's fun to see the further chain, change that I see in John and others, mm-hmm. because now that they're kind of giving themselves away in the program themselves, their growth continues, whether they see it or not. We see it all the time and and that's the fun part is is you know i'm always kind of anxious to see you know what's next i mean there's some stuff he started creating you know for the yes for, let's talk yeah let's that. talk a little bit about this because, that, like yeah. it's amazing because you put the time the effort and every in your team into john and now john's putting his time and effort it's like i feel like it's a snowball effect so oh, it's it is. changing the community it's changing so many lives you didn't just change john's life he didn't just change his own life. He's changing so many lives. And I think that's really, that's just so impressive. And Tracy, and, I wish more people could see that. I, I really do. I think that, unfortunately, people don't take the time. They right. They, they <coughs> often, you know, we always say don't, don't uh, judge a book by its cover. Um, I think we do that too easily sometimes, and we miss some really good stories in that. I, I think other times that um, we kind of forget, too, where, where a lot of us came from. Yeah. And, and I think we have to remind ourselves that, that where we came from all the time, don't use it as an anchor, don't let it slow you down, sure. but don't forget either. Right. Uh, because I, I, I see some horrible things said to me, about me, uh, about homeless people on, on social media that uh, is disturbing at best. And I just sometimes wish that I could sit all these people down and say, hey, let me introduce you to my friend John. Mm-hmm. Let me introduce you to Shannon. Let me introduce you. I mean, Butch. I can go down this whole line right. of people over the years, mm-hmm. and they'd be fascinated to know that. Oh my gosh, they they really aren't that different. Right. They have some of the same struggles we have. Something just, you know. Right. The wheels fell off. They didn't have that support, or they yeah. didn't have something at that time. So we're in the Matthews Hope Chess Boutique. Yeah. And you play a huge role in the store and actually here. Can you show everybody um, what you guys are working on now because the, the holiday season's coming and um, this is one way that the community can help support Matthew's Hope Yeah, and well, we, get something we, um, amazing in return. We typically go around and try to find something that would attract their attention and um, we're doing everything from working with acrylic okay. and making these cool little light up things really for the Christmas season to making earrings. You got to show Scott's favorite earring though, the snowman. Because the snowman earring? Those, those are Scott's oh, favorite. Oh yeah, I, I'd be tough to get. He loves them. The, the these frosty things earrings. are just absolutely amazing. I, I just think they're so cool. So when people come into the Hope Chest, John, um, are, are we going to find anything that you have worked on here? 
Oh, goodness. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have quite a few of them right here. The, this one, uh, John, I, I show um, these two. This is so a, these will be available this is a, in the yeah, store? These yeah. were okay. made for this year. Merry Christmas 2023. Okay, that's beautiful. It's an ornament. And then this has been a top seller. We were at an event recently in Brevard, and that's the uh, nativity scene ornament. That's gorgeous. It is really pretty. And it's it, amazing. I, I just had to that. make a nice bunch more. Back. Yes. Wow. I yeah, love it. John's working on one now for baby's first Christmas. That is um, I wonder where those are. You know? So uh, these, will, <laughs> these would be great no, those are gifts pretty, for yourself pretty. or if you're going to a business um, well, I tell people all the time. Exchange. Sure. You and can't I tell just people get all the time. This at Target. This is amazing. You, you this got is that thing. Yeah, and we can customize it. I mean, oh, if you oh, wanted to put okay. your, we could make these with your corporate logo on the back. And or, how would yeah. they do that? How do they, who do they contact to get you guys the information so you can get that? And how t much time in advance do they need, or do you guys need? I would get busy at it. <laughs> yeah, so, sooner than sooner later. Than later. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can't, reach, reach you can't call to... on the 24th and want it on the 25th. <laughs> so do they just call Matthew's Hope? Or is there call Matthew's specific? Hope, speak okay. to Shannon okay. is where they can start. And um, there's not much that, that the guys can't do. Okay. I think it's a matter of, like, like John said, you know, time uh, makes a big difference. But I think one thing I always tell people is, you know, parents, parents are the toughest, especially adult. When you're an adult and buying for your parents is almost mm. an impossible task. At Christmas time, yeah, and so I'm telling people these are the type of things that you know. I ask my mom, "What do you want? What do you need, mom? What do you need for Christmas? What would you like?" I don't need anything. Mm -hmm. And I go, "God, that that's yeah. not helping." Right. But I will find that these type of things, right? Yeah, something that's really unique tends to Definitely. and personal. Yeah, and it's helping that's others like too. Like this guy here, it, it's just Frosty the Snowman, but it's made from solid oak. Okay that came from the pews that came out of the church in Brevard. Wow. Is there a shop so in Brevard as well? No, we don't have a Not shop Not yet. There. We've just been doing some, okay. some shows and stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. I got, I, I got to show these. I, I see I, there's, there's some of these things. They're <laughs> really great. I mean, that's just, that's just cool stuff. And, and there's, show them the Christmas tree there, John. I love those things. So how is all of this funded? You said that the machine costed a couple thousand dollars. Um, I'm sure. Yeah. Where do you get the wood from? I guess you said the pews, but it costs money to fund all of these things, like the program. Sure. Um, that assisted John along his journey. Where did these funds come from? The, you know, they come. They come from Joe Public. They come from. You know, I, I've shared before that our our donors are typically middle class folks. Um, the nice thing about the store, and part of my interest in doing this a number of years ago, and starting the Hope Chess shop was I realized that a lot of the men and women that we were serving had some skill sets and they needed an outlet for them. And I think John would agree that when you first get into this, especially it's very therapeutic. Kind of Yeah, it does. It get, takes, get outside it takes your, your mind off your problems, you know, especially makes, when you start painting definitely. little frosties. Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, that's, that's good stuff. That is, that's you know, very and, therapeutic. and, uh, you know, you start, I mean, we've done some John has done some very big projects like wine time swings that are just fascinating, uh, making some of these wine bars that we have out of the piano wine bars. Uh, John has been heavily involved with those over the years. And there, there's just, you, you got everything from something you buy for $10 to something you could probably buy for a few thousand dollars. But what this shop and the store did for us was give an outlet to more men and women to to be reintroduced to re reenacting with people mm -hmm. enacting with people because sure. uh, a lot of times when you become homeless you can withdraw a lot mm -hmm. because you know especially men when we meet each other people often men go well what do you do well, when you're homeless yeah okay uh, <laughs> that's not exactly where you want to not start the topic out you want, you yeah, want to talk sure. about well maybe what you used to do and the problem with that is you can't stay in the past mm -hmm. and so now John can actually say well mm -hmm. you know I'm, I'm, I'm mentoring other homeless men in a program I was involved with. Right. I'm designing a product that is now sold in the store and available. Uh, you know, we're getting ready to open our Etsy store soon and That's things great. like that so we can sell a broader range of people across the country. I love that. And, um, cool. you know, what's really cool is that the truth is Matthew's Hope, all we did is, is we provided the equipment and the space and we said, go for it. 
and this is what happens. These are these things we've shown you were designed by John. So okay, he had to put them into the system. So Which is probably my favorite part of doing it is the designing part. Yeah, I love that. This, this is really cool to paint something like this once. <laughs> <laughs> you have 500, you're gonna get like 500 orders. But I don't wanna do 500. <laughs> so John, the holiday season's coming upon us and there's many organizations that the community can choose from. Speak to our viewers and our listeners, tell them why they should choose Matthew's Hope to make a donation. Why well, I, th I think it is a, um, it's a wise decision to invest in your community and help get the people the help they need to get off the streets and to, f to find work. Because it, often it's just, they've gotten to a point where without help, they feel like they're, they're, they, they, they can't do anything. They might as well give up. Okay. But with just a little bit of help, not a handout, help you know a hand up mm -hmm. um it can make all the difference in the world and give them the confidence to move on to the next phase of of recovery or or you know to, 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 to just to get them off their butt and start thinking they can be something again just giving them that belief yeah so they can start believing in themselves yeah and i think it's an investment in a community too i think it really I feel that way too and yeah. obviously you've been impacting so many people yeah, and I see it in the in the the guys in Brevard yeah. when they stop by the the shop, which is not very often, but they do. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they they seem to be hungry to get in there and do some do something do something. Let's see they they, if want, you can do it. I can do it. Opportunity <laughs> and without Matthew's right. hope, they may not have that opportunity and somebody to believe in them. Right. Well, I think, and one last thing I'd say. I know we're about to close, but um, you know, especially going into this time of year. It's a tough place for anybody, for many of us that, you know, I know personally the way I grew up, I mean, if I could skip the holidays altogether, I would. You know, I have to make my holidays for, for where my life is now, not where I've been. But, you know, it's sad the number of people that we talk to that, um, you know, I've got one guy I'm working with right now and he says, I woke up again this morning and I wish I would just die. Oh. You know, he's tired and he's, he's tired of being harassed by people. He's coming up on a top, you know, his family's all gone. They've, they're all deceased, so there's no one to spend the holidays with. And, and uh, you watch this, and, you know, if, and if we can offer just a little bit of hope, yeah. but also take someone like John and others that have graduated the program and show that not only is there hope, there's reality of doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, and John is that example. You know, um, a lot of programs out there, they give certificates, graduates, graduation certificates away. And I, I've always been kind of like, why, you know? John is my graduation certificate. Mm -hmm. Shannon, you know, others that, that you've met, yeah. uh, they're the graduation certificate. They're showing that it can be done. And, uh, and I think that uh, the future is, is, is going to, I'm seeing big things. Right. Looking forward to seeing what John comes up with next and, and how we can move forward. We really have a very nice facility over there. The, um, I think the CNC room is, I, I don't know if I've been to too many that look that nice. It's pretty, it's pretty nice. <laughs> pretty cool. classy place. Yeah. And the shop's coming along, and it's going to be pretty cool. I haven't got to visit the Burrard one yet, so I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that. But, John, thank you for your inspiring story, opening up and sharing, and thank you for being that inspiration and impacting so many other people, too, that you're sharing your wisdom and all of that. And thank you for the chance is, to do that. This is really great. It's really cool. I love meeting new people and hearing their story and how the community can get involved with that. But as I'm well. not a new person. No. <laughs> no I'm, I'm pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look great. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching. We are going to be talking about what Thanksgiving looks like for the homelessness next episode, so we'll see you then.